What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy from The Breakfast Club. Yeah. We are the original weird, weird niggas, niggas from, from the basement. basement. It's your boy, Haran Hargrave. Stay tuned for another episode of RTS Spotlight. Shout out to Respect the Shooters. They owe me $100 for that drop. Salute. <laughs> A lot of niggas say they your friends, man. But don't support shit you Don't get no money with you. I guess me and my niggas is different. I've been getting money with my team I just wanna see all my niggas win Hey, feeling like I'm making chasing dreams I'm from my squad, I just want one thing I want my niggas to win, I want my niggas to win No we making in the bands, cup in the corner with friends Got a dollar in my pocket that was tragic Started falling like Jordan, we came up on the low My niggas, we made a goal, get more guns, get more dough We came up from nothing, had to do nothing to something Now we only in the view with no curtains Zipping up from it, doesn't feel it working All my niggas live lavish, all this money never had this Money harder than a bad bitch, do say pull up in the M6 we had to grind hard, started from the back Blink my nigga Ace up and he started hustle hats Blink my nigga Swagger, you know he rep TBB And I'ma be a monster nigga, that is who I be, yeah I've been getting money with my team I just wanna see all my niggas win Hey, feeling like I'm making chasing dreams I'm from my squad, I just want one thing I want my niggas to win, I want my niggas to win what up, y'all? You already know it's your girl, Lee, and it's another RTS Spotlight episode. You know the rules. We show you the talent before we get to meet them. So let's hop right into that video and see what's up for today's artist. Round of applause for the studio's actor. I didn't want to do this, but I feel like I have to. Trying to play me, you must have lost your mind. What's done in the dark always comes to the light. I hold the cards and you look like a joker. Got me seeing red like an amnesia smoker. Now you gotta deal with the bitch you created. Anybody wanna buy a heart, but I can't say where it's located. Calling me, texting me, whisper sweet nothings, you swear you got game. They said you can't raise a man and I swear that that shit is a shame I'm too good for you I'm way too good for you Fuck you and all your lies I only deal in truth Mask on, mask off Mask on, mask off So as you can see, she has a vibe that is unexplainable. So of course we're gonna have her explain it today. We have Wyan in the building, Wyan Solo to be exact, <laughs> and she's blessing us all the way from London. <laughs> Crumpets. Crump. Oh god. We don't have any, but I wish I could bring some next time. No, I'm not really a crumpet. I heard girl. you know you eat everything else. Everything <laughs> yeah. else. Everything else unhealthy, but crumpet. What's your favorite food? steak fried chicken actually <laughs> i love fried chicken so steak is number two yeah okay more of a fried oh that's really bad fried chicken I love fried chicken that's it is there like an amazing fried chicken place in london yeah my kitchen so you chef it up oh i'm a, I'm a top chef when do you find time to cook not very often okay. it's usually when we do family things like i'm i like to take charge of the cooking Yes. I like to take charge of the kitchen. My mum usually makes the cake mm. and I'll do all the food. I'm like a real soul food kind of chick. Yes. 
You are soulful in your music as well. <laughs> like I heard the fried chicken in there. Definitely. Yeah, that, that's the chicken and that's the mac the and chicken. cheese. It comes out in the vocals. <laughs> that's beautiful. Thank what you. do you label yourself as as an artist? Because your voice is beautiful, yes. You're not a rapper. Yeah. You're not something like that. You know, you're mm. a beautiful singer. But you have a tang to your music. Mm. I'm real. You know, I know a lot of people say you should keep yourself genderless. Yes. Genreless, genderless, genreless. Both. But yeah, so. Depending on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to judge. <laughs> but um, yeah, they say to keep yourself genreless, but I'm, I'm very R&B and proud. I am very R&B and proud. Um, super heavily influenced by the 90s. Um, I've always had the same vibe. I just feel that maybe now the older I get, my pen games maybe got stronger and I've experienced more things. So I've pushed myself more as a songwriter, but definitely I'm, I'm an R&B chick through and through. R&B chick? Yeah. Soulful R&B chick. Yeah. Nice. Definitely. So you're just raw, definitely. Very off the cuff with it as well. Very off the cuff with it. Like, right. Write randomly, create randomly. Um, and I kind of mind mic world. That's kind of okay. my my pattern, yeah. Right. Nice. <laughs> I'm excited now. <laughs> so that was from your old project, the video we just watched. Yeah. Can you talk about a little bit about that? Because I want to focus on your new project coming up. Yeah. But give us a little bit about the old project. The old project was kind of a, I called it my self-help project. Okay. It wasn't structured, it wasn't, there was no release dates, there was no plans to be in the studio. It was literally for me and I decided to share it. Um, I wrote four songs, wow. four songs back to back. Like all the songs from that project were written in about 48 hours. That's insane. It was kind of, it wasn't for anything. Right. You know, it was kind of for me at the time to help me move forward. And I decided to be selfless and share it. Um, and I just put it out. And um, Did you get the response you thought you would get? It was very overwhelming. Yeah. Very overwhelming, but very... I was very glad that I went with my gut instinct and in thinking that other women needed to hear those records. Um, mm. And that's why I shot the video. It's kind of like, a, okay, I'm listening to what you're telling me yes. on social media and I'll give you a video. And it was very crazy. I'll give you a video. Yeah, I'll give you a video. Why not? <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. And um, yeah, again, it was very off the cuff. We was at home, we was chilling and I called up my friend, Gabrielle Cooper, who's an amazing photographer and videographer. And I was like, let's go shoot a video. Nice. She's like, what do you mean? I said, let's go to a real cool spot and shoot a video and we went to the Waterloo Tunnel Ooh. and it's like covered in graffiti and okay. you get like motorbike, motorbike, um, I don't know the word for them, you know the people that do the tricks on the motorbikes yes. and stuff in there, it's literally like a grungy tunnel. Ooh, and so it's like New York in a tunnel. It is a bit, <laughs> it really is a bit because it's like artistic graffiti, right. so it's super cool. Like and um, street performers, that's awesome. Yeah, we just went down there late at night and I kind of just let everything out. And that was the video. And that was the video. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. When did you start doing music? Oh, I've been doing it since I was about six years old. From wow. like the whole pattern of school and local talent shows. And then yes. as I got older, it just became my profession naturally. Wow. So you always just had a voice, definitely. When did you find your voice? Oh, wow. Because I know some people, you know, coming up, you're young, you're singing, mm -hmm. and especially when you're young, till about age 10, until your voice changes. Like people like me, I thought I was going to be Alicia Keys. Yeah, I My know, voice changed. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. But when did YN, like, come out of you? Do you know, I don't think anybody's ever asked me that. That's so crazy. Um, I think I might have been about, I think I was about 12 okay. when like I knew I was an official singer. 
Yes. Um, I was in a band at school. Oh, I always was being a band. I was. It was called the Spiders. <laughs> imagine. Yeah. I went to an all-white school and I was in a band called the Spiders. And it was called. And I was. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Because you just can't think of a least R&B sounding name. But yeah, right. I was the lead singer of the Spiders and I sang Ain't No Sunshine. And I was so scared. Wow. I was so scared. We had to sing in front of like, they had a show on and family and friends. I was so scared. I was like, Mom, I don't want to do it. And she was like, you'll be fine. And something Mama that... Mama knows. <laughs> she Mama knows. knows. Something that night clicked. I got on stage and I was a beast. Now I'm speaking about it, it's so weird. I, I can remember the night. Like, my, my fear wow. turned into adrenaline. And I sang Ain't No Sunshine, like... First off, that's a hard song. Like, that's not, like, even up there on even the talent show list that kids do Yeah, nowadays. it's very random. But I've always sang songs that were way before my time. Mm -hmm. Always. you're so soulful, yeah. Yeah, I'm a real old head, I think. Oh, man. When it comes to music. But, yeah, that, I think that was the moment, 12 years old. Ain't no sunshine. And then that was it. There's Do you no... get chills every time you hear that song now? Do you know, I still <laughs> sing it. I'm not really a girl to sing covers because I do write everything right. that I sing. But if there's an opportunity to, like, have a karaoke moment or... I, I just want to hear the first line. Like, literally, like, we got to get you on a stage for me to just hear the first line. Because... Yeah. It's sick. And even for you to even incorporate that in maybe one of your projects. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely, not so much now. Now, like, my main focus is the original music and right. showing people what I can do. Yes. But I've always said I'd love to do, like, a almost like a throwback project and, like, my own spin on some of my favourite country songs, mm -hmm. some of my favourite Motown songs and put my little wire and sauce on it. That's something that I definitely love to do when I'm out of the the hustle stages. Right. When I'm real solidified in what I'm doing. Right. Almost like another passion project. Yes. I definitely love to do that. And it's funny because you're like stuck in your old days, but you're like progressing in your old days. Yeah, it's it's crazy because I feel the influence that I needed for what the, what I had vision for myself as an artist right. came from that. Right. It came from listening to the records my mum played when I was a child, what my grandmother would play. That has now given me my sound that is so me. And it's crazy because there's so many R&B artists, but I feel like I'm not quite another one yeah there's something and different, different yes. and i'm proud of that because it's so hard to find your unique spot mm -hmm. you know especially now when there's so many artists about coming every day there's a new artist yes i wanted to have something that made you say that's a y and solo record right or you know it's kind of like brandy yes when someone hits that brandy lick yeah. you're like that's a brandy that's note. a brandy note. exactly so that's kind of like, yeah, that's where I got it from. When did you become like a songwriter in your own sense? Because, you know, you've seen covers, you're growing up singing and just kind of listening to tunes. And you find your voice even from just singing songs on the definitely, radio and definitely. songs you've heard. But at what point did that pen really hit the paper and you became wine as that, 13. as a songwriter? 13. Mm -mm -mm. 13, I won my first award. So 12, you was on... Ooh. Yeah, that was it. From that, from that moment that I told you about, it didn't. Oh, yeah. It just had to keep going up for me. Yes. Because I liked the feeling. It's the weird. It was like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. You're scared, but there's an excitement element to it as well. Yes. And from performing with the spiders, I wanted to keep going, and um, but I never really tried writing. And then uh, I listened to a lot of country music. And my mum used to play Patsy Klein, and she had a record called She's Got You. And I was so young, mm. but the record, like, I got it. I got it, and I felt right. it for her. Wow. And I was like, Mommy, I need to do this. I want to write songs like this. And she signed me up for a workshop for, like, three, four days, I think it was. And you got to pick two musicians to work with, and you wrote your own song, came up with a melody. 
and I wrote a song called I'm Going to Try. And I had a saxophone player and a guitarist. And I was so, I was so bossy for a little girl. Yeah. I was telling him, like, no, you're playing it wrong. It needs to sound like the man on Whitney Houston. I will always love it. It needs to be really big. And he was looking at me you like, knew. who's this little girl? But I knew. You know. I knew. And um, I did the song, I'm going to try. About a week later, my mum shouts upstairs, you've got some mail. I was thinking, I ain't got no mail. Like, I'm a kid, I don't get mail. Yeah. And I came down, she started opening it. And it was a CD. And they named the whole album of all these 20 kids that entered this competition. All their songs were on it, but the album was named I'm Going To Try After Mine. And I won my first award for that, and I was like, I'm gonna be a songwriter. And from then, I've always wrote my own songs. <sighs> Crazy, when I think about it now and saying it out loud, I've yeah. never sang something in the last how many years that I haven't wrote myself, so that's pretty. Crazy, yeah, that's mad. That's different. That's mad. <laughs> that's different. Yeah, I don't know how they do it in London. Are there a lot of songwriters for artists in London, or it was it was very surprising to me that a lot of artists that I grew up loving didn't write their own stuff, which I didn't understand until I was older in the industry. Because when you're a right. kid, it's just this song's amazing. Yeah, I didn't know until I was in the industry and these artists were calling me to write for them, and I was like, oh, okay, right. So I didn't realise having the ability to write songs was such a major thing. I thought we all did. But, yeah. It's something that everyone cannot do. And it's, yeah, which is mad because we all have a story. So you wouldn't... But we all don't have a song. It's and very true. It's crazy to think that, like, you could come up with something right now. You're probably even coming up with something right now. And me, you tell me to, I don't, uh, something. You know, <laughs> like, I wouldn't be able to, just because... One, you have a melody, mm -hmm. and the thing with you is that your voice is like your heart. Yeah. So it's like, you you know, you were born with it, but mm -hmm. you just kind of just kept beating, and you just kind of, you know, found it as you went. Definitely. But, like, when did you start realizing, like, you know, when did you start getting those phone calls from people? Like, hey, I want you to write for me, and you're just like, wait, whoa, hey, how did this person get my number, you know? Like, yeah, was, how did people I even know I wrote? From 2011, like when I touched down as Y and Solo. Okay. And I started putting my own stuff out. Right. That's when a lot of people started contacting me, which I don't think I was prepared for because I was still trying to understand being Y and. So it's like, we saw this on YouTube and we want to get you in a session right. with this person. I'm like, but now it's a blessing. Like, it's a real blessing. And I've done some amazing things. I've worked with artists that, you know, 10 years ago, I never even thought I'd meet, so. Hey. Was there, like, a good um, bridge? Or was there a gap between, you know, being in London? And you're very well-rooted well in London. Not mm -hmm. only, you know, living there, you still live there as well. You know, you have home base there. Mm -hmm. Were you interacting with, you know, the American music and stuff like that? Or were you kind of more just in your space, in your lane, you know, in your country, just trying to figure it out? Well, do you mean for me as an artist or did I listen to? You seem like you listened to everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could tell that just even from the soul in your music. You yeah, know, with yeah. Country. It's not a lot of people they say that they listen to country music. Oh, no, I love country music. You know music, what I mean? Yeah. But that is a musical thing. A lot of artists do listen to country music because... The songs that are written are some of the best songs. Definitely. And they're classics. You know, country music is one of those genres where there's a lot of classics. Exactly. And exactly. those people, you know, keep going. I think it's also the instruments. You enjoy the instruments. I, I love... I love everything. It's crazy because I've never been in a position for my own, one of my own projects. Right. I've always wanted to do a live production. Yes. But it's, it's so hard to set up sometimes and, yeah. you know, the musicians you want are in different countries. And, hard to get. But with country music, it's raw. They, they record on one track. Yeah. And I love it. It's just, it's, it's the most natural sound, in my opinion. Right. And I've learned a lot from it. And it's like a story. It's like when you was a kid and your mum used to get you the books that came with the cassette tape. Mm. That's how I perceive country music. I close yes. my eyes and I see the story. Right. And that's why I think my style of songwriting is very story 
storyteller. Right. Um, yeah. That is dope. <laughs> so now your stories. Mm. What do they consist of? I know a lot of people say, you know, life and everybody has their struggle that you've been through. Mm -hmm. But what do you really find yourself constantly writing about or writing towards? Um, for me, it's really like in that sense, it's very R&B. It's love. Yeah. It's heartbreak. It's making love. Right. It's everything around that. Yes. Um... My music's almost like pages from my diary. I actually have a record on my new album called Dear Diary. Um, but yeah, they're like diary entries. I'm very personal. I only really discuss my business, personal business with my mum. So that's kind of my way of getting out whatever it is I'm feeling or what's going on. Right. Do you feel like your path took a different direction? for the fact that you do have a support system with music because it's very hard to come by, you know, mm -hmm. just growing up. You know, we always go by the phrase, parents never understand, but yeah. coming up one as a female, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a little touchy, you know, when your daughter's starting to sing about making love and, and the beauty of love. Oh, no, that came later. Stuff like, oh, yeah, came <laughs> that came way late. Right, mom <laughs> had that, like, nah. nah. Yeah, that came late. I mean, when But I she did support you. From that she's always, before I was a singer, I was a sports girl, like in school. I was a tomboy. I can't even imagine. And this is it's what's so funny girl. because of how I am now. Yes. But I was a real ruffian in primary school. I was with the boys and that right. was me. And my mom was at my games cheering me on. So it didn't surprise me. She's that mom. She's that mom. And I don't, you know, I don't like to brag because I know that's not everybody's situation, which is unfortunate, but... I have been blessed with a mother who I can say after this interview, yeah, I had fun, I'm quitting, and I, I want to go and be an astronaut. She'd be like, right, so now we've got to go Google about NASA. <laughs> that's the type of mum I've so got. That's beautiful. And I think that's what makes me work so hard because a lot of parents wouldn't believe in this and yeah. wouldn't want their one daughter to go into such a crazy industry, you know, right. when they, they could be a doctor or a lawyer or... But she's at every show and every session and every meeting and and it's motivating because... It makes it worth it, right? Yeah, it makes me... I'm, I'm a hard worker in general. Yes. But seeing all what she was willing to sacrifice for me to live my dream... Yeah, we're going to move on from this subject. Yeah, we're going to move on. <laughs> Mom was in the building... But this is what the fans need to know because yeah. this, little do you know, you know, these feelings, even though you write on that piece of paper, you know, and these words come to your mind and these mm -hmm. concepts come to your mind, is really your feeling and yourself that you're putting on this piece of paper. Literally. I'll tell you a fun fact. Yes, please. My first ever record, Professional, yes. was a song called Smile, okay. 2011. And we were talking about this at radio the other day because everybody who's a Tony Braxton fan knows she hates, she hated the Unbreak My Heart record. Yeah. She never wanted to do it. I hated Smile. I wrote Smile as an apology to my mum because I was a teenager, right. popping off at the mouth, <laughs> being cheeky. Yeah. And she wasn't having being it. Cheeky. She was mm -hmm. like, I'm not having this from you. You know, you need to come down a couple pegs. And she was so mad at me. So I wrote Smile, I went and recorded it. I think I was working like in retail or something at the time. And I went to make her like a fake plaque with the CD and the song and say like here. That song, after she forgave me from the apology, three, three maybe five months max later ended up on a Universal compilation album. Wow. Imagine, they put it on the R&B love song collections. I was on there with R. Kelly. Jessie J, Drake, Jasmine Sullivan, all these people who I'm obsessed with. I was on an album with them with a song that was like a fun thing, like, I'm sorry for being rude, mum. I love you, wow. forgive me. And that's how I really got my first big break in the industry. And then Universal asked for a follow-up, so I did the R&B Summer, Love Summer mm -hmm. Collections album as well. So it was crazy. And it started rolling from there. And from there, I've just, from 2011 till now, I just kept going. 
Your mom might be your lucky your lucky charm. Oh, definitely. Your luck charm. I knew that before the record. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that before then. Are you the only child? No, I have a brother. Okay. I have a brother. Um, he's not in the industry or anything like that. He's, although he has these moments where he feels he's like the missing <laughs> member of Jodeci. Don't we all? Every Christmas he feels the need <laughs> to break out in song, but no. Yeah, I've got a big brother, but I'm the only girl. I'm the baby too, the so baby. it's so annoying. Right. Super protected. <laughs> it got to be like that. You got to have your little protection on the side. No, definitely. I, I'm very, I have a great family and they're very understanding. Right. Because I'm not home all the time and I do miss birthdays and stuff like that, but they're really amazing to me. I'm lucky, definitely. That's awesome. <laughs> what was your favorite cereal growing up? Do you guys have special cereal in London that we don't know about? Do we have a cereal that they don't have? Probably not. You guys have Frosted Flakes? Yeah, they just call Frosties. <laughs> they just call Frosties and it's got like a tiger Cheerios. on the front. Is it really Cheerios? Cheerios are my favorite cereal. Is it because you're from London? I don't know. What's Cheerios got to do with London? I mean, it's a little phrase you uh, can use. What a London phrase. It's like a classical. Well, there we go, America, because I'm from London and I've never heard of this phrase. So. <laughs> because I love fried chicken. Yeah, exactly. Like. You're so normalized, and that's the funny part. That's why it's, it's cool to meet you musically. Mm -hmm. That's what brings the world together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people fail to remember that is that we all listen to music and we all connect. Of course. And literally, you know, you could be in one country listening to an artist, you know, mm -hmm. through a friend or through SoundCloud or anything, mm -hmm. and not even realize, you know, they're from a whole different country because we don't Literally. hear your accent also yeah, in when your I sing. music. Yeah, How does that people... happen? Um, well, I think I don't have a Cockney accent. Right. I don't have a strong East London accent, so... Um, I think certain artists, their sounds based around that British sound. Right. Like an Ed Sheeran. Like an actual British sound. Yeah, yes. and it's, it's almost like, a, and it's cold in the dawn of December, need you to keep me warm. Oh, like they're playing on that. Yeah. Whereas me, because of my style. The deep. Yeah, it's more soulful, so it's kind of like certain words don't fit when you're writing, if that makes right. sense. So it's like, want. Sometimes it might have to curve the eight want. Do yeah. you get what I mean? Yes. And I know it sounds crazy to say it, but in a song, right. like Hennessy and Rose Petals, I don't say petals, I say pedals. Yeah. Because it fits cleaner. Yes. I know it sounds so crazy saying it, but to sing, it's just, it naturally, I don't know. Right. Everybody always says that I don't sound English when I sing. I don't know if that's a bad thing. It's like a nice surprise. Yeah, it's when you fun. Meet it's like me. Idris Elba. Huh? I didn't know he had an accent until he like. I was didn't on an know Idris show. Elba was British, and he lived like fifteen minutes from where I'm How? from. Like I didn't know the man was British until I watched him on an interview, and my jaw was literally on the floor. <laughs> yes. because, what a brilliant actor you have to be. Right. I didn't know. We didn't know. I didn't know. You didn't even know. I hold my hands up. I did not know Idris Elba was British till like maybe a year ago. We're definitely going to take a break on that one because <laughs> if you didn't know, then we all deserve to at least have some <laughs> insight on what happened with that. We're going to jump into your video from your new project that will be dropping by the time you guys see this episode. So let's go right into that and you'll just see how she switched up. <laughs>
How she switched it up so getting to know her and now understanding that you did this first project as a personal mm -hmm. identification project and selflessly gave it to us to listen to yeah what is this new project about Hennessy and rose petals is me drawing a line in the sand it's very honest and it, it needed to be done. Every record that's on there needed to be wrote, yes. it needed to be sung, it needed to be heard. Yes. And I feel like now that I've done this, I can now start experimenting as far as what I'm capable of doing. Right. This is my last personal passion project. Okay. I think that I'm at an age now where I have to learn from my mistakes and you will hear the growth of that within this project. And it took some time. It's never taken me so long to complete a pro like I've complete legit been losing my mind <laughs> because it's like the more I got into it, the more I started reliving things, mm. the more I was still living things. Yeah. And it's like every time I thought I was done, there was more to be said. And this is my baby. I've put out a lot of music, but Hennessy and Rose Petals is my baby. Right. I feel like I've been so honest, so vulnerable. And if people understand, if they get what I've tried to do, which I don't want to explain, I want you to make your own decision and make your own interpretation of what yes. you got from it. But, yeah, this project is, it's a long time coming. And I feel now that I've done it, I can go and be a woman. Right. Be a stronger woman and be a better woman which will make me a better artist right. for me to give the best of me to my supporters. Right. I had to do this. So it sounds very crazy, sounds kind of dramatic, but it's when crazy you play, because it, it sounds like a movie. And it sounds it is. like this like well written Steven Spielberg like horror <laughs> movie because we really don't know what's gonna happen next. It's kinda left on a it's kind of like power. It's left like, what's coming next yeah. season? That's how I've left the album, literally. You don't know. I haven't left it like, okay, so we can expect this from her. You don't know what I'm going to give you. I don't know what I'm going to give you right now. Right. I'm, I'm still in a place of relief. Like, I can't believe I did it because so many times throughout creating Hennessy and Rose Petals, I was like, mama can't. I cannot. Yeah. It's too emotionally draining. I can't do it. And she was like, keep writing. There's no rush. So the fact that it's done, I don't know what's going to happen next. I've 
pushed myself so much as an artist. I rap on this project. I'm not a rapper. Aww. And I'm, you Which know, I've like made it yet. very clear. I'm not trying to be a rapper. Right. I'm, a, I'm a creative person. I'm an artiste. Right. And if I feel something's necessary, then I'm going to do it. So, yeah, I just hope, I hope people enjoy it. As much as it has been the most stressful project to yes. create, I really want people to enjoy it. I feel like it's an incredible body of work and I've never been able to say that in my life and mean it. Mm. I've always been told you have to, it. you know? Yes. I kind of feel like I'm having a breakthrough moment where for the first time in almost 10 years in the industry, I've made something and I'm proud. I, I'm so proud of myself. Right. And yeah, it just, it feels right. Feels right. More I'm so than excited anything. for you. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you. Now I think that's that's the biggest thing, you know, with music. It, and as an artist, you know, people lose themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's sad to say, you know, people start off writing and they start off young, like yourself. And yep. They go into their craft and they lose themselves mm -hmm. in the music. They lose themselves with these writers. They lose their feel, their feeling with these producers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And for you, it seems like we're actually humbled enough <laughs> to watch your life grow you know Literally. what i mean and it's kind of like your music is just like an update it's like a twitter Literally. like a twitter status you're just updating us that's with a like really music. good way of putting it yeah and it's like it's like a blessing because you don't get to experience you know artists lives anymore you know what i mean we see them In on a social positive networks, way. right we see them on social networks but you don't feel with music anymore yeah and that's something that means a lot to me because i i grew up in the Mary J. Blige times, the escape times, the 702 times where... You feel it to this day. To this day. And I've been in so many situations where they've been like, oh, you shouldn't do R&B. You won't get nowhere making R&B. And I'm like, I'm not in no rush. I'm not here for the fame game. I'm here to make great music. And a lot of people thought I was crazy because I have had opportunities right. to be a pop star or... And I've been like, no, I'd rather go and do a healthcare job and be true to myself. And now I think that's why I'm so excited is because now it's kind of like, it's not about proving other people wrong. I proved myself right. Keep going and just trust and believe in what's in your heart, which was that real soulful, mm. raw, honest music. And that's how I've built my support system is from giving the music that wasn't necessarily in the charts that, you know, nobody hadn't heard since the 90s. But now I know I've done the right thing, if right. that makes sense. Oh. <laughs> You're just like unbelievable. Like, I don't even like, it's hard to question you because you're like a walking, living album. Literally. And it's like a continuous album. Do you ever see yourself writing a book? No. <laughs> Why no, not? Uh, because I... So you're giving us pages of your diary. I am. Um, we can get a book where we... Do you know what? It. I feel like every day of my life, the book could never be complete. That's true. I live in London. If yeah. someone would have asked me three years ago... Do you think you'll be in New York in three years' time having an amazing interview on a TV show? Probably not. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. How can I write a book when this story's never ending? It's never ending. Every single day of my life, I feel there's something significant. How am I ever going to write the end? I can't do it. You're like a living legend. Oh, <laughs> she's so... <laughs> and it's really, it's crazy because why some people, you know, throw that shade towards mm -hmm. the drive of R&B and soul music is because that's, they're living legends. Yeah. Love doesn't stop, you Ever. know? Falling in love doesn't stop. Breakups doesn't stop. Heartbreaks doesn't stop. You chasing after someone, that stuff is... It never ends. We're always going to relate to it. That's what actually makes us human, mm -hmm. our hearts. And it's like... 
you're not only a walking legend, but you're just like going along super classy. <laughs> and now my biggest question, because this is off influence. Mm -hmm. You've been influenced. I'm pretty sure that fried chicken stuck because your soul like is actually a warm soul. Like, I don't know if you've ever mm -hmm. met somebody with a warm soul, yeah. but your soul is a warm soul. I mean, like, old people, you know, where you just speak to them and they're so wise and stuff like that. You're not even, like, 60. You know what I mean? You haven't been <laughs> in this industry for 100 years. Yeah. You know, you haven't dealt with the American way of, you know, yeah. the industry, and you're just so, like, there's an innocence as an artist with you. I've, from a young age, I think I learned early on to mind my business. And I've carried that with me into adulthood. I pick and choose very wisely, okay. which I haven't always done. Um, and I see beyond what people present to me. And I'm not hungry in a, I'm never starving. There's a difference. I'm never starving. When you think you're starving, you put yourself in crazy positions. I'm not starving. I'm, I'm a very blessed person without being wine solo. Right. So patience is what's brought me to where I am now. And I'm never ever, I can say this on camera, in private, I'm never gonna change. Regardless, throw a hundred mil in the situation, I can't change because I'm too at peace. I'm too content to, for all the, all the madness. Because if that was the case, I could have been on a track record and gone viral. I could have been singing hooks for the best rappers in the UK. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I mind my business to keep my peace of mind. And somebody had to hear that because, you know, you saw us, you know, in here before you and talking to our other guests and stuff. And people need to hear this. You know, there's so many they people do. that are just in inconsistent situations. And you of know course. what's crazy? The only consistency they have is that song that plays on the yep. playlist on their iPod. And that's what's important to me. And that's why as much as I hold my hands up, I'm in the club dancing to all the latest because songs. You love and your life. Doing all the yes. madness. But for me, I feel like my purpose is to give you that song where it's like, oh, I'm not alone. Because you're not. Just because you see these people on Instagram with Chanel and Rolls Royces and Luxury Hall, you don't know if they're happy. So you're there beating yourself up because you're not taking cute relationship pictures like your favorite mm -hmm. artist. These times, you don't know if she lays in bed at night and cries herself to sleep. Right. I pride myself on being honest very honest and the only way I can do that is through my songs. I can't sit down and tell everybody what I go through. Some people don't care but for the people who do need to hear it they can press, press play and you're good. You're not on your own. You're not on your own because we all go through stuff. It's sad and it's unfortunate but it's life. You have to take everything and make it work for you. I've been through horrible things. You've been through horrible things. But you're going to let it break you down? Right. Yeah, yeah. for a minute, you're going to cry. You're going to feel bad. Yeah. But it's up to you to say, you know what? This isn't going to kill me. So I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to keep it moving. And that's what we have to do. With everything. Not just me as an artist. Everything. I just use my music to give you that motivation because that's what I know how to do best. Right. If I was a, a doctor or a nurse, I'd help you in another way by saving your life or making you better. Right. That's just how it is. It's really simple. And I haven't always been this positive person, trust me. But you're growing. I'm growing because, like you said earlier, a lot of people that I've encountered in life through business, as a woman in the industry, relationships, friendships, family, they played on that innocence. They played on the fact that I was, you could see I was a person who made it my job to be a good person. Right. It got abused. Yeah. 
So what am I going to do? Am I going to be weak and get broken down? Right. Am I going to boss up and write hit records and do what makes me happy and look after me and my mum? Yes. It's really simple. It's really simple. Really simple. <laughs> I could like sit here and just talk with you for hours because... <laughs> You're just so wise, and you're so talented, and you're so beautiful. Ugh. And then, like, I don't even got time. <laughs> RTS Spotlight, this is YN Solo. Her next project is coming out soon. It will probably be out by the time this episode airs. So go check out Hennessy and Rose Petals. I'm excited for it. Like, <laughs> I just feel like you're that friend that had like a baby and like I'm like got the call and like on the way to oh. see it because the way you've talked about this project is so delicate. Yeah. And the fans have to hear it. If you do not know her, shout out your Instagram and where we can find you and your music, please. You can find me under W Y E N Solo. I'm pretty sure I'm one of the very few YNs in the world. Yes. Um, <laughs> The album's out June 23rd. It's going to be on all online digital outlets. Yes. And yeah, come and say hi. You can find me on all social media. And yeah. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. Like, literally, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for coming from London to see us and to join us for RTS Spotlight. Because, pleasure. guys, this is what it's all about. There's not that many artists that come up here that I can truly really say this about, but RTS Spotlight is about the artist it's about you it's about us leaving now and us knowing where you came from why you're doing this and give us that peace and tranquility when we listen to your music Absolutely. and boss up and yes. listen to her music because you know she got some music in there for the ladies about oh, your definitely. man definitely there's okay? some sassy records y'all know her r and soul is <laughs> thank you for joining us thank my you, love thank you my love YM Solo please go follow her RTS Spotlight we are back next week with another episode. Phil, that's the most but vulnerable like, I've ever been I, in an interview. You're just <laughs> like, I don't even know what you just did. I feel really crazy. Like, I I'm really do. I feel like, you know, like when you watch like an Oprah interview, I feel really crazy right now. When I tell you, I'm like actually overwhelmed because you're just like, I don't even know. You said you was a Taurus earlier and that made me nervous instantly. My yeah. grandmother was a Taurus. Yeah. And her and my mum are like my two favourite people in the world. And there's something about me and Taurians that we're like buddies. But it's crazy because... Well, you're very raw. And we, we catch it off rip. Mm -hmm. You literally could be natural, you know what I'm saying? Like me and we'll be like, mm, girl, you ain't real. Mm. I already know, you know what I mean? But first off, just... I don't know, and it's hard for me to even, it's crazy, like, I don't even, I don't know what you did. It was very, I feel very vulnerable right even, now, it's really weird. And it's crazy to say this, but I don't know if, like, you're the angel in the situation or your mom's the angel in the situation. It's crazy. Because we're, like, watching your life right now. Like, I don't know if you, like, get it. Like, I've met so many artists, and we're, like, there's so many people that in five years, yeah, I'm going to win a Grammy, and I want to be big, and... Some people don't understand that you have to walk the walk and the stuff will mag, just yeah. magnets, just magnets. Exactly. And you're just walking around and you're getting heavy. And this is why your heart is so heavy because it's crazy. We don't talk about it. Yeah. Because you're not supposed to. You're supposed to be humble and hard work hard. Walk with your head high. Act like everything's okay. Paint on a fake smile and get the job done. But unfortunately, as an R&B singer, it's very hard for me to keep that facade going and give the level and quality of music that I desire to give to the world. I can't be fake. And I wish I could be, trust me. Because for years, you know, my mum's told me it's okay not to be okay. I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm always fine. Right. And this project allowed me to actually say I'm fine and I can look in your eyes. I right. am fine now. Yeah. I'm really fine. And that's why I feel weird to say it because I don't think I've said, physically Much. said it. Like, it's right. crazy. I've just been in the studio working and, I don't know, to say 